All right. <coughs> Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullah. You might want to shift yourself a bit. Yeah, I'm a bit, un- I'm a bit unshifted at the moment. Yeah. Oh, yeah it doesn't there's, there's, a, there's a dumbbell in my way. Oh, there's sorry. Is that my 45 <laughs> kilo dumbbells? <laughs> yeah, it's 45 kilos. But it's. No, drag it, drag it, drag it. Is it? You can move more if you want. No, just with your pinky, just push it to the <laughs> yeah. side. Uh, Assalamu alaikum. Welcome to Russia Grounded. Wa alaikum salam. How are you doing? Yeah, good. Thanks. How are you, Kaya? I'm good, Faisal. All right. I had somebody DM us uh, today. Okay. I'm actually going to expose it. It's your long lost cousin, Callum. Okay. Oh, yeah. Yeah. DM'd on the Fresh Grounded Instagram. I'm mm. exposing him right now. And he said, Hi, Faraz. <laughs> now, okay. I've been getting my hair cut uh, until I moved out of the UK from Callum's shop. Right. For maybe over a year. Mm. I didn't know that he thought my name was Faraz. Fine. Um, maybe. As his long lost cousin, yeah. explain, explain it. Explain it. I'm going to try and come to Callum's defense here. Look, maybe it's a little uh, nickname that it, like, you know. Yeah, little, it's, I, I, it's I, I, love. That's my mate. Oh, yeah. Oh, Faraz. oh you could have. That's nice, Faraz. Me yeah, and him. I like, love. We okay. go back a long time. Oh, right, I'll take that. Back, yeah? Fine. I'm fine with that. Okay. Thanks, fine. Faraz. Yeah, I just want to start the episode just like, I, I want to hold yeah, you accountable for that. Put you on, a, on a back foot yeah, straight away. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'll try to assert my dominance. Yeah. Alhamdulillah. How you been, bro? Alhamdulillah, man. Good. Haven't done an episode together in a minute. It's been, yeah, it has been a minute, hasn't yeah, it? Yeah. Last one we done was obviously we were speaking about the dentist, uh, no, the ear ear trip that mm. I went to to obviously get my wax removed. Yeah, how are your ears? Now? Have you noticed the difference? Uh, yeah, they're um, still not good. Oh, really? Yeah, I had a uh, blocked ear for the majority of uh, yesterday. I think, I think, like I said in that podcast, I think your issue is like sinuses, actually. Yeah, it might be, bro. I, 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 it's not a big enough issue to get um, checked out for me because... That w- the other, what happened the other day was rare. If days like that come more often, then yeah, I, I want to get checked out. But mm. um, is what it is. Yeah, I'm just gonna put a backup recording on as well. Um, yeah. I was gonna say like um, I wanted to mention the podcast. So it feels like we haven't we we did do a podcast recently because we did we did it on Cairo's new podcast. Oh, of course, yeah, right, uh, the Inner Child podcast. Uh, and I wanted to mention it just because I thought like the concept is so good. And I don't know about you, but at one point that stood out to me was the little exercise that he made us do. Where we that was really where we good. Where we close our eyes. It was really good, wasn't mm. it? Um, yeah. I think the whole, I, I told a few people about it and like, wow, that is a really good concept. I feel like podcasting is like, you do need a very good concept now if you want to get started. I mm. think he's got that. You can't just be like, talking about general yeah, shit. Yeah, you can't be, you know, like a chin wagon <laughs> exactly. now. Over nothing. Exactly, yeah. yeah. But I, I, I'm better. I think he's got a good concept and I really hope that he like, he runs with it. How, it's a really good concept. It? And I, this is me speaking to Cairo if he's listening. Mm. Cairo knows this. He has a uh, tendency to have. Gr- he there's, there's 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 two things that Cairo Cairo doesn't lack. Um, that Kaya does. No, the two things that Cairo doesn't lack, and that's a great ideas and immense talent. Yes. He has both of those things, yes. and because he has so many good ideas so regularly, and because he knows about how, because he knows what he can pull off with his talent. And his ability to just get things done, he he keeps jumping from idea to idea to idea sometimes, and he knows this by himself. And I think that, like you said, this is a great idea that he has. I'm really happy that he executed it so fast. And I think if he sticks to it, this could be a phenomenal podcast. Yeah, I think so. I yeah. Think so so yeah. what what was the podcast? So we basically it, so it's called it a child podcast, and the aim of the podcast is sort of uncover not necessarily trauma, but uncover your childhood, whatever that looked like. Mm. Which I, again, I really like because. There's a temptation with this kind of thing. It's like, oh, let's talk about trauma and only get trauma- traumatized people on the podcast, which I guess is also a concept, but I don't think it's a, it's a great long-term concept. I don't know. Maybe I'm talking about that again from like a privileged position. Maybe people who've got trauma would, would really like that. But I feel like he, the way he's presented it to me is that everybody's going to come on wh- whatever sort of walk of life you're from and just talk about childhood. And if you do end up discovering something on the podcast then great. And if not, it's just like you get to share that actually your, your child was really good and you had this memory and that memory and and you can just reflect on how that impacts you as an adult now. Yeah. And I think it's really good. Yeah, but I discovered a lot about myself actually from that podcast. Did you? Did you? About yourself? <sighs> no. I th- not, not that I personally, I, I still enjoyed it. I don't think I discovered anything. And I think Kara touched on it and my wife touches on this as well that I, I, um, and you kind of also have, because you, you say like, I simplify things a lot, right? When in, in life, I'll just like, I'll keep it very simple and I won't like delve too much into it. 
And I feel like I do that in most things in life. And I feel like my childhood also, like my overall view of my childhood was, uh, alhamdulillah, positive. And I enjoyed it. If I was a delve now in, let's like, move on to the next yeah. topic. I mean, uh, if I was a delve in, like if, if I was sitting with a therapist, like a two hour long chat, and they were like really digging in, I probably would uncover something that, oh yeah, that was a bad day that day. Like, but um, I feel like it, I rediscovered the fact that <clears throat> I am able to sort of put a lid on things and just like, mm. I'm, ha I'm, I'm happy with that as it is. And I don't feel the need to delve, delve into it to like discover new things. But um, I enjoy the process anyway of like of talking about old memories, things like that. Yeah, which so is something do I. I don't do enough of. Like personally, I, I, it's nice to just reflect and and think of things like that happened to you. Yeah, yeah. I, I I'm actually the same as you. I, I speak about, I speak to my older sister about this, about the fact that when we reflect on our childhood, we have really good memories about from it. You can always pick out like things like traumatic things that happen, like yeah. have happened to everybody. Um, or like, I wouldn't go as far as saying traumatic, but as in like, everybody has ups and downs, yeah. is my point, right? And um, you sometimes get bad news, sometimes somebody in the family's passed away and stuff like that. So there's always ups and downs. But generally speaking, like, I'm uh, happy with how, like, yeah. my childhood and stuff, alhamdulillah. Mm -hmm. And uh, and I've, like, kind of kept it at that. I've not, like, dug into my childhood. Yeah. But for me, the, the podcast was interesting from the aspect of um, seeing not from like the events of my childhood, but when he was asking about uh, me to think about the personality I had in my childhood yeah. and how that relates to personality of having an adult, that's when I was making connections and I was like, wow, I've never thought about it. I, I never see, I'm not an introspective person much. I'm not a mm, deep thinker. Yeah, same, yeah. And so you are quite a deep thinker. Well, I mean, like, when it comes to my past, I'm not really. Fine. And so when then, when he was like, oh, is there like parts of your personality that you had as a child that you still have or that you didn't have, but you wish you had and all these kind of questions that really made me think. And it comes back to the exercise, which you, you mentioned, which he said, well, the exercise like close your eyes, um, think, uh, think about your childhood. Um, in fact, if you're listening to this right now, yeah. close your eyes unless you're driving, yeah. <laughs> which is not illegal. <laughs> Keep them open. Yeah. If you're operating heavy machinery, do not close your eyes, yeah. but otherwise close your eyes. Raw. <laughs> <laughs> Close your eyes. And then, um, what was he it said, again? He said, think about your, your childhood bedroom door. Yeah, think about your childhood. You know, he said, lean back, yeah. put your head back, close your eyes. Think about your childhood bedroom. Yeah. No, childhood he, door. He said door, because I remember looking at my door uh, and opening it. Like, like a then he said, open, open the door, Yeah. walk in, and you see yourself. On your bed. On your bed. On your childhood bed. Yeah, sitting on the bed. Uh, and that moment, you, right now, at your age that you are right now, what what's one piece of advice or what's something that you would say yeah. to that child? Now that, now that you've had a while more to think about it, would you change what you said in the podcast? No. Yeah, same with you, yeah in the moment, I was like, well, I've never, and I actually found it cheesy. I found it, in no, fact, it wasn't cheesy. No, I found it, I find it really cheesy. Maybe people say like, you're good enough. As I felt, but bro, it's nah. just what came to my mind. It felt, no, when you said it, it felt very real. Yeah, it, felt, it just, it's what came to my mind because I think at, I, when he, because the, the other great thing is, is he spent the whole podcast talking about your childhood. So you're like gearing yourself up. You're thinking about your childhood. And then at the end, he asks you to do that exercise. So you're coming with the context of having just delved into your whole childhood for an hour. Mm. And so if he asked that me to do that exercise in the beginning, it would have probably been a different answer. But after he made me analyze my childhood personality and realizing that I always wanted to impress people. Yeah. Then by the time we got to that end exercise, I was like, my answer was, um, you're good enough, which was like, um, yeah, like you don't need to try so hard to constantly try and impress people. Like you're good enough how you are. You will make friends and you'll have good relationships just because you yourself are fine in doing that. You don't have to pretend to be even more or like yeah. really go out on a whim to try and impress people. So yeah, that's quite, uh, that's quite cool, man. Yeah, I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it more than I thought I, I would. Yeah, same. Yeah, because yeah. Yeah, he's just like does it. He, he, he keeps at it. Because one thing you said is like, Cairo is like very talented, which is true. But also I want to like point out his hard work. Like I, I noticed yeah. also. <coughs> he put a lot of effort into it. Yeah, when he does something, he does it. I'm going back. Really well, yeah. We got, he had a six studio booked. Um, he like reached out to my brother to get a question yeah. for us. There was a lot of like, you could tell that he'd like planned it meticulously and he executed it as he wanted it to be. Well, the other thing with Cairo is that he doesn't realize how good he is at what he does. Yes. Another thing that shocked me is the fact that he, I don't know if he still does, but he said in the podcast that like he, he used to struggle with confidence like that. But if you ask me who's like one of the most comfortable you know, it's Cairo. Yeah. Like that's the vibe I get from him. Like, yeah. Like, yeah, it was interesting, man. It was very interesting. Yeah. Um, 
I heard you got a candle store. I'm actually interested in the candle My candle, Fine, I'll tell you the candle yeah. story now then. I had, the, 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 what was the other thing that I had? I had a candle story and I had... Um, candle story. Oh, the podcast I was listening to. Oh, yeah. Let me do that first. Go on then. So, um, I was listening to this episode of MFM, which we used to talk about a lot. Mm. And then I think since the summer, um, we got... I, I kind of fell off listening to it, as, to podcasts in general as much because I was traveling a lot. And uh, if you didn't know that, you should be subscribed to the Fresh Ground <laughs> newsletter where I wrote an email newsletter saying I traveled seven times this summer and I stopped listening to podcasts. You'd think that because I'm traveling, I listen to more, but when you're out of routine, it was in my routine to listen to podcasts. Yeah. And so anyway, I, I started listening to this one episode with this marketing genius called um, Craig Clemens, I think it was. I'd really recommend listening to the episode if, if you haven't. Um, and one of the things he mentioned was about so the whole episode was about marketing but it was about like a a higher degree of marketing so there's technical marketing which is the the everyday you know on the ground marketing you know the running the ads the analyzing data and stuff like that but he was talking about a higher level which is actually changing behavior and he was giving some stories about how some of the biggest uh shifts in the world happened uh, by market by marketeers and one of the stories that he told was a story about bacon and doctors. And so I think I'm going to probably butcher the story. Excuse the pun. <laughs> uh, but the essence of the story, I don't think will be lost in my explanation anyway. And the essence of the story was that they wanted to sell more bacon. And, um, but people weren't really eating bacon at breakfast. And so the marketer that they consulted was like well look people are already eating it at lunch people are eating at dinner we still got another meal let's try and convince people that bacon is good for breakfast mm. and so they in some way shape or form the end result is they got <coughs> they got the ability to say uh, that doctors recommend bacon for breakfast and the way they did it is they surveyed a certain amount of doctors and asked them a very specific question like would do you like would you agree that um, meat is good in your diet at the beginning of the day in the, like and bacon has that kind of like meat or whatever and doctors are like yeah sure and then next thing you know loads of articles saying doctors recommend beef uh, recommend bacon for breakfast mm. and it's a classic example of so so anyway i was kind of relating it to the current situation of the world right now and it's a you off air you just mentioned the word propaganda which is which is which is very true but um and i suppose that's like what i was getting at but it is a classic example of um not accepting narrative that's been just given to us uh just because it's been given to us or just because it like sounds like pretty legit like oh a study says that and um uh, we, obviously, what I'm talking about is when you look at what's happening in Palestine and in Gaza, uh, there's obviously like, I, I mentioned it two podcasts ago, which is like the most impressive thing online from the Muslims has been that Muslims have done such a great job at every time a lie comes out, Muslims have done an incredible job at like not only fact checking it, but 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 making sure that they distribute the correct um facts yeah right um uh, to ensure that people understand how um serious it is or how or how factual it is that there is an ethnic cleansing taking place in gaza in palestine in general and a uh, genocide uh, and and it uh, although people i would like to think especially muslims know that to be true the there's no doubt that the effort of Muslims fact checking and then distributing those facts at mass and, and like making it like like really like putting it online everywhere has been so beneficial. It's been beneficial for me, bro, because I am reading some stuff. And I'm like, whoa. And so um, my point overall was that I was relating into that situation, which is that it's very easy for someone who wants to do a bit of marketing to go, oh, hey, like this is what's happening or it's because of this or whatever. And it takes for it takes effort and energy for you to um, fact check and to actually like, dig into it and um, not to in any way, shape or form, like uh, 
in any way like lessen what's happening in Palestine and, and related to food. But I, my point is that's what kind of it made me feel think yeah. of. It made me think of, because if you look at the issue of food or any kind of marketing that's done that's not necessarily really got legs, um, l anyone who's health conscious it would look at that and go, I'm not eating this for breakfast. This is not healthy for me. Mm. But because they did a bit of effort, they did a bit of research and stuff like that. And so it kind of brought it all back home as to like how important it is the again i mentioned again the information war the fact that yeah. it's so important that information is coming out and no uh, people aren't just like accepting whatever they the first thing they see on like the news or whatever in yeah. in, in, in in like in the uk or whatever yeah uh, it, i think it's very important you linked it to, to, to the current situation in gaza because um and palestine in general because it's very true and, and you've got to pay attention to language being used propaganda is all about language and how they frame it yeah right so they could they could still be reporting on the factual thing but the way they frame it and the language they use around it is so important. And when you see... Like when you see when they say that Palestinians have been... Uh, Palestinians have died, yeah. but not killed. Exactly. The, exactly. Like you're, yeah. the, the people in, you know, these the people over here have been killed, people over here have died. Why, why, why are you making a yeah, distinction? Yeah, what's the difference? Yeah. There's, a, there's a very clear reason why they make the yeah. distinction. Or, or um, so for example, go back to the doctor thing, right? When I think when they said the, the whole bacon thing, they said... Uh, you know, 4,500 doctors agree that. Oh, is that what it was? Something like that. I'm pretty sure he said the, the word agree. And that's important because when you say they agree that, and then something, that means that that would insinuate they've been asked a question and they said yes or no, or yeah, we agree. So it's like, okay, what question were they asked? There's something behind that, right? So you can't, they didn't just say, doctors say bacon is good. They didn't say that. They would, yeah, yeah, they yeah. would word it. It's very, you've got to pay attention to the words. They agree that, bacon can be beneficial under it's like okay what was the question they agreed to because that question that you asked them is really important because that's the context you've given them they may agree to something but they may totally disagree with this conclusion you've got from it do you know what i mean and similarly when it comes to reporting on on palestine you said again they died the quote unquote died thing or there's like um you know a strike on such and such camp the refugee camp a strike what does a strike mean the way the more you use that sort of um vague language the more you instill in the reader like oh it's just a chaotic place yeah, 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 no one's yeah. to blame it's just like you know chaos and war it's like no if you're being serious and truthful you would say the facts as they are but you're removing certain parts of the language or certain parts of the sentence uh to that, that, that essentially exposes your your bias right that, that that's why when that instagram post that i reposted that somebody wrote like them key wording in there that I resonated with a lot was uh, that stay sensitized oh, yeah. because when you it's so easy to become desensitized isn't it yeah I, I, I go back and forth with this like because um, the argument is you know don't you know don't um, desensitize yourself by and, and that means that don't watch too much of this stuff to desensitize like stay like keep it raw in your head type of thing but then I feel like guilty if I don't like if I try and like oh, I won't watch this particular video it looks a bit too like traumatic Tough, or something yeah. I thought it was like, no, man, oh, I, I, should, I, I, should, I should watch it and I should feel that what they're feeling, a little, a, a, a tiny fraction of what they're feeling at least so I can. I, I, I saw know. the don't stay, I saw that as, um, I saw stay sensitized as, not as like don't watch the videos, but I saw stay sensitized as like, don't let yourself tell yourself the rhetoric mm. that, oh, this is just what's happening in the world. Yeah. Like stay like, realize that every single life. Yeah is like so uh is is an actual life yes. that's what i like meant by like stay sensitized yeah but yeah that 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 that, that particular podcast is weird because obviously that podcast is what opened like that thought up as well even though like that podcast was simply about marketing i was actually listening to that in um the cafe the the, the cafe the, that actually the camera story stems from mm. the, because um the I not, normally like i'll listen to a podcast on my journeys and then like once i get to my journey i'll stop listening yeah. but i carried on listening because i just thought like this guy's giving a master class of marketing and i'm actually using that to run a meeting at tortil in a couple of weeks and i'm going to talk about how um so when like we're in on the ground at tortil we're like trying to obviously like make the app better or we're trying to like educate people on how to use the app and stuff like that. There's all like technical aspects, right? But I want to zoom out and I want to say to the team, um, how do we zoom out and look at behavior of people and actually change uh, behavior? So how do we um, convince people, how do we convince more Muslims um, to uh, try and memorize Quran? Uh, 
and I think that's important because w- w- uh, when when I was doing my Quran journey, which I started very late in life, I had accepted. I told myself that I'm not going to um, memorize Quran. I'm not going to try and even become a hafiz. And the reason is is because some people are hafiz and some people aren't. It's not compulsory for me. Um, and some people got it and some people ain't essentially. And now, then I changed my mind, and that, that mind got my mind got changed by my teacher speaking to me, by one of my teachers saying, "You should like start memorizing now." You're like, and 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 so on and so forth. And what it made me realize is that I'm so grateful that I changed my mind because yes, you could say that it's not um, uh, far for everyone, every Muslim to become a hafiz. But you know the benefits. I get. I'm not hafiz by the way, uh, but I'm still such a baby in my memorization journey. But the point is, is the benefits of memorizing Quran are so large. Having the Quran in your heart, being a person, it's actually a, it's a gift from Allah. It's not even something that you choose. It's like, are you blessed to yes. be, even be uh, someone who has who memorizes the Quran? And so I want to kind of talk about it from that angle of being like how that shift that I went through in my mindset. I'm so grateful for that shift. How do we convince more people that they should, like, because people might down talk themselves and say it's not for me. How do you convince more people that, like, no, it is for you because you get so much out of it. I'm I'm not talking about from a, um, uh, like a financial perspective. I'm talking about from a behavioral perspective. I'm talking about the, 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 Beauty of memorizing Quran is it's like a feeling like no other. How do we convince more people that they should embark on that journey? Do you, so uh, my first question: Do you have like an idea of, of what that is? No, I, I want to run like a kind of like a workshop. Like, yeah. what do you guys think? Like, what experiences have you had? Because the obvious one is like, oh, you know, it's easier than you think, right? And that's a, that's a good one. So like, some people think oh, it, it must be extremely difficult uh, to like just even to memorize like one juz, for example. So you could go down the angle of like, it's actually much easier. Look, if you get like a case study where it's like one person, they memorized a jewels in much short amount of time than you think they would have done. And they did it using this app and so on and so forth. So you could go down that, but I thought that's the, the usually the first thought isn't like the big psychological hack, isn't it? There might be a different way where you can present. I, I think that what you have to do is explain to people what the benefit is for them, mm. which is what they mentioned in the podcast as well, didn't they? And the benefit for you is, mm. is read and ascend. You know, you'll ascend according to how much Quran you know. The benefit for you is that when you become a person of the Quran, the first of all, there's like so many miraculous things. Like when you when Quran is in your life like that, because to be to be someone who's a hafid, bro, Quran has to be implemented in your daily life. You're daily revising, you're daily doing new memorization. And when you memorize the whole Quran, you're still daily revising. And so if that's the case, what are the benefits of reading Quran every single day? Mm. But unlimited. Yeah. You know what I mean? The shifa, the barakah, the rizq. Like it's just un- unlimited benefit. So I think you, maybe you go from that angle, which is because what was it that they said in that um, podcast? Like, uh, yeah, like well, there were some examples of explaining to people the benefit. Um, was it like the toothpaste, toothpaste one maybe? The toothpaste one, yeah. Right? Like. If you did they did they? Like, I remember him saying like, oh, at one point nobody no one nobody was brushing their teeth more than like once a day. I didn't, but how did they? Let me see. That? You have to make it. No, that was you have to make it an event. It was called make it about them. Focus on who they become and their benefits. Mm. Yeah. So um, I can't remember the, exa- the actual. Like, I think example. maybe that was to do. Maybe one example. Maybe he related that to the example of. Um, when the cigarette company was like, did you listen to it? Have you got to the point about the cigarettes? Cigarettes. I don't think so. No. So basically what he said is, is that back in whatever decade this was, oh, um, yeah, did, yeah, cigarettes the, the, the were smoked by men. Yeah, 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 and he was yeah. like, how can we make women smoke cigarettes so we can sell more cigarettes? Right. And then they basically focused on what the end result would be, like what you become if you smoke cigarettes. And they pitched it as, if you as a woman smoke cigarettes, you become... Um, like it's like an authority thing. You're going against the grain, and you're sh- and like um, it's a way of you showing women's rights and stuff like that. If you mm. smoke cigarettes mm. and stuff like that, so uh, yeah. Um, but yeah, I I, 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 I was listening, I was listening to that episode in the cafe, and um, that is when I was basically delivered a candle. So I'm going to give you the cancer. It's really not that interesting. But okay. there's something really funny that happened in my week that I thought I would tell you about. So um, I should I should give some more context to the cafe. All right. So Kaya and I, we've been to this loads of times. 
<laughs> say one more time. Our kids go to the same school. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, but the school is not that close. And so uh, we work uh, in like five, uh, cafes in more, and stuff. Five minutes yeah, away. In the mall, five minutes away in like cafes. Now, what's interesting and funny about this is that even though we run a few businesses together and stuff like that, we don't work uh, in the same cafe uh, because we're not going to get work done. We're going to end up talking like Can't this. Can't stand each yeah, other. Yeah, <laughs> Off the podcast, we're going <laughs> exactly. near each other. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, and so Kai actually worked upstairs in one of the cafes and I yeah. worked downstairs. And Although at, at the beginning, it wasn't intentional, was it? Because like you no, were, it wasn't. No. Yeah, but it just remained that way. But yeah. yeah. Well, it's more me. Like, I feel like you could work if I was there, but I it's can't good, work. It's a good rule, Kate. It's yeah. good, like, generally speaking, yeah. If I give me some something or someone to talk to, yeah, and I'm talking, <laughs> and <laughs> so, um, and so anyway, so the, but the, the point is that the cafe that Kaya works at is upstairs, and mine's downstairs. This is an important part of the story, mm. right? And I, you'll see why later. And so anyway, um, uh, one of the things you probably don't actually get bumping upstairs is that there's like flies and stuff. Do you I get that? No, not that really. Yeah, not, in fact, last couple of weeks it has been actually. Is it? Well, upstairs, I, even. I think I got a. I got bitten like two weeks ago. Oh, really? My like Actually. ankle. Yeah, that's that never, might be because it's shifted. Weather, never, maybe. maybe, yeah, the weather, like the flies are coming out now. Maybe. So anyway, um, they gave, uh, they come and drop a candle. Uh, so, so I'm working there a few weeks ago and the waitress comes and she has a plate, a small tea plate and she puts a candle on it, like a tea candle. Wow. She puts it on my desk and I thought, oh, that's like nice, I guess. Mm. Uh, bit weird. Yeah, a bit but, forward. Right. Yeah, a bit forward, but <laughs> nice, I guess. Yeah. And, but, um, but whatever. And um, I thought maybe like, because I'm here so often, like, uh, <laughs> give, give like, him a candle. No, because, but you say that, but every now and again, <laughs> yeah. I'll get like a free cake and stuff. Yeah, they give, my, my guys, usually they give, uh, when they give a coffee, they give one cookie. Your boy gets two cookies. Oh, that's nice. I, 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 every now and again, they'll be like, they'll bring like a cheesecake, like a slice oh, wow. of cheesecake. Like a cheesecake. Yeah, and they'll be like, oh, like, we're just trying a new recipe, like, let us know how it is. Yeah. I'm like, God. so I thought maybe like, you know, being, I'm here every day, blah, blah, blah. She's like trying to make it more nice, whatever. So I was like, fine. But at some point, it got a bit annoying, like the candle, because <laughs> I'm trying to work. Yeah. And the candle, I'm just thinking, my hand might touch the fire. So I, I blow it out and I move it out of the way. And then, like, then what happened is, like, I, a few times, like as I go back uh, to this cafe um, over the weeks, every now and again, like someone might put a candle on my table, which never happened by the way, and like until like, a few weeks ago. Mm. And I've been going there for a few months. And then um, I was like, okay, fine. Maybe it's just something that's starting to do, but they, they sometimes only bring it to like my table or whatever. Right? <laughs> so that's what I'm like confused about. <laughs> and then one day, so then the other day I was <laughs> sitting there and um, I bought and, she, and they bought a candle. One, someone bought a candle, and they said to me, "Oh, like this should help or something." <laughs> and I was like, "What?" <laughs> and they were like, "Yeah, with the flies." And I was like, "Oh, because yeah. basically I'm there going oh, <laughs> like this. Right, you see, we right. got this <laughs> because we're like because I'm in dancers right next to the doors. So there's flies oh, coming, right. so I'm like moving, moving, moving. And they're like, "Yeah, like the candle is so that the flies." get scared of the fire or whatever and they like fly away i like that makes so much sense i thought they were trying to be nice to me yeah. and like i keep blowing the candle candles. lit breakfast yeah i keep blowing the candles out and moving like that and yeah. then being like well hey all these flies here so does it work then when it's when it's on does it work you, you i notice? don't know i guess so it must yeah. do right if they're doing it yeah but yeah it's because the cafe's right next to the door and so there's like flies that's funny that's funny yeah i, I don't really notice um I've there must be a really funny way of telling that story no, I think you did the best you could do. That. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, but there must be. Bro. There must I mean, be because do you think like someone's giving you fl- uh, if someone's giving you uh, candles? Do you think they're say, being like, nice? Yeah. And then at the end, it's like oh, no, we're just giving you because like the flies are in the way. Like, <laughs> there has to be yeah. a way that someone a good storyteller must be able to tell that well. No, nah, you're you're the best storyteller I know personally. So uh, oh, I'm the world's worst nah, storyteller, bro. Bro, your stories they've had me hooked. No, so yeah. Well, I've actually, I, I've actually got worse as I've got older at like being able to tell a story <coughs> concise. I'm already not. I tell. I even said today earlier to my brother and I said, Allah bless the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam with concisement of speech, mm. and that's one thing that's in the Sunnah that I don't have. I don't have concise of speech. Neither do I. But I think I think that's um, like when I used when I used to listen to Freshly Grounded before I ever met you. It was the USP. <laughs> yeah, no, I mean it was because it was like. 
all right, Faye's telling a story and it's going to take him like five minutes to tell his story. Yeah. And I quite like that. I was listening to the story and it's like, you know, he might like, oh, I'll go back to the other part. It's like, it's, it just feels very authentic. Cause the just, most common comment for Shagani is like, the, I like the episode, but the host took a really long time <laughs> to yeah. ask the question. <laughs> but yeah. sometimes, sometimes yeah. it's because yes, I'm really take a bad long time to ask a question. But other times it's because people don't understand the nature of the podcast. It's not meant to be an interview. I'm yeah. the worst interviewer. It's just meant to be a conversation. Yeah, exactly. And in a conversation, I'm allowed to talk. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I think the people who watch FG understand that and they like that. It's, it becomes something that's I hope like, so. that is a US, you said it before, USP. It is like. We just hit 15 million views on YouTube, by the way. Wow. Yeah. Alon Berk. So like, people must like it. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, look, if I used to watch it, yeah, you know what I'm saying a low, got, low, that's a very low bar, though, isn't it? <laughs> 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 Entertain Kyle. Yeah. <laughs> Although I never, you know what? I said watch it. I very rarely actually watch it on YouTube. Mine was always on a podcast app. Really? Yeah, that's interesting. Yeah, that's how I discovered you. On how did I discover you? I, don't, I think I discovered you from a clip way back, and I, just, I had you on my podcast app. And I never used to watch. There was one. There were certain times with you and Sam, and it was like there'd be like you'd be discussing like a cup or a mug that you've got or a hat that you've got and it'll be like oh, I, I should go to YouTube so sometimes I'd go to Would YouTube you go back to watch that bit yeah so what I'd do if I had like the time not if I was like at my laptop too because uh, I have my phone playing it, I, I couldn't go on it's like oh was it oh 10 minutes and 70 seconds I couldn't oh yeah that's a nice hat and I'll, and I'll go out yeah so I do that that's interesting isn't it that's really, yeah, fun. That's I, really I, funny, isn't it? You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know I, I don't think Freshly Grounded would um, survive if we started it now you know that I disagree because I think the time that t the timing was great. Yeah. It was but, impeccable. Um, it, the timing was, was impeccable. I'll tell you why, bro. Because cause we're not because we're like a non controversial, we're we're just a chat, we we don't clickbait and we don't seek controversy, which are all the things that get views. We're just a, a natter. It's um it's not that's not what the algorithm right now You're is right. like optimizing for. You're right. And I think the more time goes on, the more like the more outrageous you can be, especially we're seeing like a lot of streamers now. It's like they're streaming live. It's like they're like inviting controversy and inviting yeah. whatever to like get more views. So if from that perspective, yes, I agree. In the sense that it, it it wouldn't have blown up like that because it's not that. But there would have been, uh, as we have now, alhamdulillah, a section of people who don't want that. And they want like cool, calm, collective conversation that is funny and informative and just like short. something to listen to, in the to listen to yeah. i had the bro I, I told you i had a brother reach out to me on instagram dms a couple of days ago did he call you for us <laughs> 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 uh, i think you, you got my name right but he was he was saying like um you know he, he loves a podcast and again he loves the 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 natter podcast that we have oh, really the little the little jokes that we have that he was like other people he's like other people, it's interesting because like I also used to think the same thing it was like oh other people probably would find this funny because like you you and sam would have like a little a little whatever, a little dig at each other, a little like joke. It's like, but like you're almost whispering a joke in between a sentence. It's like that, but that's that little whisper in between made it funny. And I would think, oh man, there's such, it's quite a niche humor that I like. And he was saying the same thing. He was like, this humor is like very niche. And I think only like me and a few of my friends understand it. And he he loved the Natter type podcast. That's he, good. He's reached out to say that. Yeah. Um. So people, uh, there's a there's a large, unfortunately, section of people who they just want drama. They want to see something crazy happen. But I think a lot of people just want like something to listen to that's going to be funny but it's not going to be outrageous like purposefully outrageous for no reason just to get views so i think fg would always have a place but yeah it was never it's never going to be a tr like a, a billion subscribers because like we don't do that stuff it's yeah. like mad like it's kind of nice that it's got like a, there's just a community behind it i mean yeah. we do we do need to um we do need a billion subscribers because we're about to release. We're about to re. This is actually an announcement. Nobody knows. Okay. We're bringing the game back. Okay. Yeah. yeah not I only scratch that. It's going to be a billion, inshallah. Yeah. Yeah. Not only we're we bringing the game back, as in, as in, it was. It never went anywhere. It went. It went. At one point, we stopped the game, and then we were like, "No, we were wrong. We shouldn't have stopped it. We bring it back because so many people wanted it." But it went out of stock, and um, we've taken ages to restock it. But now we finally restocked it. And it's the shipment is on its way to our new warehouse in Manchester, UK. Nice. Yeah. Upgraded warehouse, yeah? Well, you say upgraded, but I think that's hey. everybody gets their warehouses for a particular <laughs> reason. Yeah. Everyone's got a warehouse in Manchester. Everyone's got, they do. They do. They do. Yeah, I don't know. You don't know that. No. But I went to visit a uh, business. Why Manchester? Because it's cheaper rent for warehouses. I see. Yeah. So there's a lot of, a lot of uh, uh, like, you know, like a lot of fast fashion brands and stuff. Their warehouses are in Manchester. I don't know that. Mm. I would have thought like. And now we've jumped on the trend. Oh, the game mm. warehouses in Manchester. Interesting. So if you've got an infrared torch and you're looking <laughs> for some games. Yeah. <laughs> 
So <laughs> scanning the warehouse in Manchester. But yeah, nice. we got um not only well actually what's really great about it is not only do we have the game coming out, but we've also got the Ramadan version restocked. Oh, that's coming oh, out Baruch. as well. Yeah. So that box is nice. It's nice, right? Gold. Is it gold new? It's the Ramadan version, limited edition. Limited edition. But has it been released before? Yeah. Gold version. I know. But we only game. released like a thousand or something and then they all sold out. Okay, so I've just picked out the top one. I'm just going to ask it to you because I'm literally it up. Arx it. Uh, I'm going to ask. What lesson did you get from yesterday? Yesterday was Tuesday. No, um, today's Tuesday. Is it? Yesterday's Monday. No way. Yeah. Yesterday was Monday. Absolutely. Um, the lesson I got from yesterday was uh, you get what you pay for. Ooh, so I feel like it's a deep visceral story there yeah the visual deep story is um the sofa bed you can see behind you oh yeah uh it looks good mm -hmm. which i'm happy with uh it was 75 quid brand new good it's not the most expensive sofa bed in the world nope. in fact it's possibly the cheapest <laughs> 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 I've never heard of a sofa bed yeah no have i yeah um it looks great yeah but you get what you pay for it's hard yeah. <laughs> it's <laughs> no one's gonna sit on that sofa bed and go yeah. Mate, yeah. give me can, a hot chocolate. Yeah. Can I sleep here? <laughs> yeah, exactly, yeah. <laughs> Does this thing become a yeah. bed by yeah. any chance? <laughs> yeah. um, it's hard, It's but look, it does a job. He said if I could for it. I've got some guests coming around, need an extra bed or match or something. I was like, yeah. let me just get this to bed. And it looks nice, but um, yeah, you get what you pay for. Yeah, it's, it's fine. Uh, let I'll, me ask you one now. Go on in. Excited. Even though it's not running on. So nervous. Here you go, first one that came out. When you think of the afterlife, what's the first emotion you feel? Um, so, and you must also answer it like a robot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I like the whole robot thing right now. She she, she turns us on as robots. We've got like chase her like a robot. Really? Yeah. You got like yeah, that's what Isaac was doing right now at your house. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah exactly. probably. I come back like exactly. How's Isaac's house? It I was. I was going around like a robot <laughs> yeah. everywhere. Yeah. All right, so when you first said that... Um, wow, I haven't seen these questions in about two years. Was it on Yom Kiyama came to my mind, so like the Day of Judgment. Okay. Which is interesting to me, because like you said, the afterlife, so it could have been anything from like the Barzakh all the way, it could have thought about Jannah as well, or, so, or Jahannam. Yeah, yeah. But I thought about, I thought about Day of Judgment, and that's like fear. Fear? Fear of myself. Yeah, that's the same answer I give. Yeah. It's interesting, because I, I'm the same as you. I also, um, the first thing that comes to mind, when I think about the afterlife, I can't, my head... Does can't get past Yom uh, I, I, It's such I'm a not, scary day. You, for me. you said that before, and I. So my first thought is fear, but of course hope is there as well. Yeah. So I have hope, and um, Allah is Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim. So I have hope, um, but I also do f spend time thinking about Jannah. I do. Like I, I can get past it, and I can like I hope. Obviously, hope to get there, and I ask Allah to give me Jannah. Um, I do think about it, and I do like let myself daydream a little bit. I do do that. Yeah, that's good. That's important. Yeah, I think it is. Do you not? Do you not do that? I definitely think about Jahannam way more. Yeah. But I don't even think that much about Jahannam. I think about Yom Kippur a lot, yeah, and I think yeah. about stuff like stuff that's got in my head was like, there was a. Uh, I remember once hearing the explanation about, like, was it like seventy thousand angels, um, dragging the hellfire, in or something. Like there's a lot of angels and yeah. there's a big hellfire and that vision in my head. Like, I'll, let me get it. But I think uh, I don't want to say it incorrectly. But I think it's seventy thousand on range, each. and then there's eight, seventy thousand angels on each range. On each range, something like that. But I'll get. I'll. I'll let me because I, I don't think we should say that about. Getting so so by the, while you try find that this Ramadan edition is making me like really nostalgic now. There's so in the Ramadan edition, what's interesting is that there's questions, but there's also challenges. Oh, I don't know that. Yeah. Well. That's really bad that you didn't know that. <laughs> Your Abu Hurairah reported, the Messenger of Allah, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Sallallahu said, Alaihi Wasallam. Hell, and this is the translation, hell will be brought on that day with 70,000 rains, each rain carried by 70,000 angels. Yes, that's so scary, bro. Like, yeah. I can't get past that. How, how, how can I think past that? The part, the part that I, I, I like, um, the Sirat is really... Yeah, that's scary. The same here. Yeah. yeah. Bro, yeah, like all the part, like the Sirat, the book landing in your, like, I, I remember hearing one thing, it's like, um, like, um, the, the, if, the, if, the, if your book of deeds lands in your left hand like some people will be like putting their left hand behind their back and stuff So, but the, the book will still forcefully get into the left hand yeah. like things like that just like you can't run away on that day okay it has challenges so like some challenges I'll read out one says challenge if you draw this card it will say it says make sahur for everyone in the house tomorrow morning oh. yeah 
Yeah, that's the reaction I <laughs> yeah. wanted out of that. You're dropping people You're in a good there. dance partner. <laughs> yeah. um, one challenge says, choose one app to delete. One, choose, one, choose one social media app to delete for the rest of Ramadan. Mm. What would you choose? I would choose... I downloaded um, Speakly. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, oh, I just downloaded dictionary.com. Yeah. I guess that was have yeah. to go. It's got a social area. <laughs> yeah. I'll probably delete something that's a bit challenging for me. So, um, I don't know. I have to look. I think you're, you're, you, like, you like Twitter, don't you? I think like you're on Twitter. I like to browse Twitter for... Memes yeah. and stuff. Um, more so for like, what are people talking about? Which yeah. I think was actually the first caption which is twitter's first ever um like ad wasn't it like what are people talking about yeah what talking like about? what yeah yeah something what's like everyone that. talking about something yeah like i like that. to look at what's trending in different countries I, I sometimes shift do you change the country i've done a few times like yeah. regularly i change the country every now and again to see because i'm not in the uk so like what's happening what people talking about in the uk mm. just have some connection uh, another challenge uh tomorrow fast from your phone as well except from phone calls okay that's a good one isn't it yeah uh yeah i'm not gonna give them all away give me one more give me one more I'll give you a question. Yeah, go on. All right. I'll go give you a question after that then. I'm going to pick a nice one that will... Uh, We're showing how... Like, we can't put this game down, mate. We opened it up and it's like... Yeah. You want to get into it. It is, yeah. It's good. And this is really good quality. Like, this one... Not mate, I like it used. a lot. I love the colouring. No, I mean, as in like this particular version, I've clearly not used it because there's like... The cards are like brand new. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. Oh, this is a really good one. Oh, but this is one of my favorite questions. Do you know what? By the way, can I tell you something that's really special about the game? No, the no, game no, and no, the Ramadan no, awesome game. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 What's really special about the game is the questions were um, individually written, all of them by Kareem and I, um, and then analyzed like so much each question we had loads more we cut them out it was like we were bro i got footage of us in the fresh grounded office for hours but look at each question delete that yeah and then we had like all the questions laid out like should we keep like should we keep it or mm. not and then we were looking at it from an angle of like is this good islamically not yeah. it was like the, each question is really it wasn't just like chat gpt like right 100 questions yeah, you know what i mean yeah. so that's what i really like about it. um this question says finish the sentence i love who i am when i am with blank Oh, that's a very good one, isn't it? Look at I, me. I'm, Look I'm, at me. Yeah. <laughs> I'm running I'm running into the same issue I had on on, on Kara's podcast, which is like I, I get this um urge to say to, well not urge, I, I I the initial thing I second guess what I'm gonna say because like I don't wanna come across like I don't know. My initial thing is to say I I, I like who I'm with everybody. I don't I, I don't I don't um feel like I change, inshallah, I don't change myself too much with who I'm, whoever I'm around. So I, I've, and I, I've got, I think I've got a good grip on like, okay, this person who I'm with right now, they're a bit of a drain or they're a bit of like negative and like I'm quite good at like cutting it off. So I, I, I struggle to say. But do you like, do you like, like who you, like you feel I like- I hate myself. <laughs> <laughs> I also who I'm with. <laughs> yeah. Obviously, the first comes um, to my, is my wife. I, I love myself with my wife. I, can, okay, I just laugh and joke. Um, because lo- there must be people that you're around where when you're around them, it's just such a sick time. Just because like you, you have the same band on. Can't think of anybody. Yeah. <laughs> no, my there wife, someone, you have the same band yeah. on. Right? <laughs> There's three people come to my mind. My wife, um, you, yeah, thank you and, my, my, and my little brother. Oh, I feel nice. like I can, I can like... Um, let go of the jokes with, with those three. Yeah, you'd be relaxed. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. yeah, yeah. For me, it's my big sister. Oh my <laughs> <God>. <laughs> <laughs> you got to right. Last one, but this is yeah. I, good, I good. actually, I actually want to just like play the game now. Um, okay, that's a good one. We're not good enough. Oh, what's time? Oh, that's fine. Okay, I got six p.m. Yeah, I won't keep you too long. Yeah, I've got, what's the time? I've got 6 p.m. guys. It's 4.24. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's a, okay. This is a good one. What do you have enough of? Checkmate. Mm. I have enough of... Um, I, I, 
I I don't know. Maybe I'll just say like I have enough. Mm. Like full stop. I I haven't thought about that like much, but a few months ago I had a conversation with my wife and we were talking about. I guess we were just talking about like contentment in general, and I was saying the truth is. Oh, oh, oh do you know what it was, bro? At the time I was like, you know, oh, I need to get dining your dining table, and um, we haven't got around to that yet, and. Um, you need me to get bedside table lamps and stuff like that. So it was like very like, it was, it was physical object kind of stuff. And so I was talking in the physical ob- object sense. And then I was like, I remember being like, you know what? We keep talking. There was a period of time where we kept talking about, oh, I need to grab that, I need to grab that. Like at some point you've got to grab lamps or whatever. And then I remember being like, you know what? Actually, it, how the house is right now it's fine. Yeah, <laughs> like yeah. we have enough. Like what are we? What do we need lamps for? Like we've literally got a bedside table lamp on that side. If we need a bit of light, we've got it. Like no one ever goes into our bedroom, so it can't be for like what other people think. We're content with the lamp we have. Like why mm-hmm. do we? And so yeah, you know, I would like to give you like a really a deep answer that's like non like not object based or anything. But the great thing about the game is that you answer it according to your situation at the time. And I, I'm sure at times I've answered that question more in a non um uh, a tangible way, something to do with mindset or have enough of like happiness or something like that. But really re- recently, uh, in the past kind of year and a half since moving to Dubai, it has been about that because you did a whole life move and so you think, okay, you know, we'll slowly get things for the house. Yeah. We'll slowly sort out, you know, um, the kitchen, like they've got to get this thing sorted or the blinds or the curtains. Um, but actually, we it got to a point where we were like, actually, do you know what we're doing? Like we keep, there's always something next. And, at some point, like, do you know what is enough? Like, right now, for example, our, our kettle, um, the lid of it is a, a bit broken. It's not even broken. You know when you lift the kettle lid? Yeah. Um, if you lift it too hard, goes it, ma- it explodes. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> it's fine. <laughs> yeah. Obviously, I have super strength. Yeah. And so when I lift it, sometimes the whole lid comes off. Whereas right. it's meant to be on a hinge. It's meant to just like lift up like that. Okay. But sometimes it, the whole thing comes off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What you do is you just put it back. Mm. And, you know, it's like, oh, we need a new kettle. Because it's like, no, we don't. Mm. Like, it, yes, we could just go out and grab a new kettle. Alhamdulillah, I have 15 pounds for a kettle. But... Um, why do I need a new kettle just because it's a bit more inconvenient? The yeah. kettle works perfectly fine. There's something loose in the lid and it's fine. You just put it back on if you, if, if you do pull it too hard. So sometimes you look at things and you go, oh, like you always think, oh, grab a kettle. Go, why? Well, it's kind of like you've got a kettle make use from me. And I think I've become complacent now in the last year and a half because I'm kind of like constantly buying things because mm. you think to yourself, oh, there's so much still to do. Yeah. There's always something to do. Exactly. I had a very similar thing um, when, when we moved. It was like, oh, yeah, we've got a grand plan for what it will look like in the end. Like we'll, over the few months, we'll like furnish it, we'll get this on the wall or whatnot. And then after a while, you realize that again, you have sort of like not done most of that stuff and you realize like you're actually quite comfortable. And then my initial reaction though, was of a lot of like frustration. Like, ah, oh, another thing I haven't done. Another thing on my list. I, I'll say I was going to put a mirror up there and I ain't done it. And, but then I realized it's actually, you know what? I come to what you're doing now, which is like, I'm content with it how it is. I don't need like a big mirror on that wall. I'm happy. And you have to kind of sometimes think like, why do you want it? Do you want it yeah. so that when people come to your house, they like it, or do you want it for yourselves? Yeah. Like- and I guess like when you do, when you, I think especially when you move somewhere, you got that blank canvas, so you sort of see like the the finished product. Or what, I can have that here, little couch there, and so like you you sort of subconsciously set a goal. But what you're saying is extremely important, which is like you don't need all that little like these little you decorations. Can think of, yeah, you can always think of new you things. Need. You got a mirror up there. You, you went to home center. You saw a different shape one. I was like, oh, I can do. I can sort yeah, it out. Yeah, exactly. There's no real end to it. So it's like just be content with what you got, man. I, I was gonna get a massive rug for this room. I still am gonna do that. To be fair, but uh, you got enough rugs. No, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, I think I actually do need it for soundproofing. But mm. I remember when I was like the other, when I was like thinking about it, and I couldn't find the right one and stuff like that. And then I was gonna get one. And I thought, why am I pan- like rushing to get a rug? Like we've done. I don't know, like, what, 100 episodes or 50 episodes in this podcast we do without a rug and no one's gone, the soundproofing could yeah. be better. Like, <laughs> yeah, it will be better, yeah. but I can wait. But yeah. I remember actually, to your point, when you got your car, I remember the oh, first yeah, day, one, yeah. we were sat <laughs> outside <laughs> oh, and, you go, done, yeah. and you go, well, I'm going to get that removed. I'm going to add this this mm. thing that I saw and I'm going to get the wheels changed and stuff like that. And I remember like six months later, I was like, did you get that stuff? Yeah. like, I ain't touched it. Yeah. <laughs> it's actually funny you should mention because it's now been a year. So it's been a year since it happened because- You're joking. Yeah, I mean, I got a text today that I, I've got to renew my- um, It's been a year since you got your car. Yeah, crazy, isn't it? 
Wait quickly, man. And you were in this room yeah. and then the car got delivered? Yeah, yeah, subhanAllah. No way, yeah. bro. Yeah, it's come up for... It's true. It's come, <laughs> up for, it's come up for renewal. So I've got to pay off my... And I still haven't you, got a rug. <laughs> and, I, and I've still got to pay off my traffic fines to renew it. That's bro, that's crazy. It's been a yeah. year. I, can't, I just can't believe that. It is crazy. It's, man. it's gone very, very quickly, man. SubhanAllah. Can I ask you a question, bro? No. You're 32? Bro, that's so interesting, you know, because I was going to say to you, one of my things I was thinking about earlier is you don't that know your age. I was going to ask you a question, how old are you? Because I genuinely don't know how old I am. I think I'm 31. You're joking. You I have to know how old you are. Are you 30 or 31? But I don't, I, what year were you born? 1992. There you go, so you can figure it out. What, I can, what month but I don't, today, right, I, second, I don't know how old Fine. I am. What month were you born? August, August the 7th. All right, so you're, you're 32, right? I, I think I'm 31. I'm no, not, 31. definitely not 32. No, no, you're 31. Am I? Yeah, I just, yeah, yeah I, just, I just turned 31. Okay. Right, you turned 31 August, August, right. August, yeah. So I'm two years younger than you, yeah? yeah. About a year and a half, actually, because I'm 29, but in like two or three months, I'm going to be 30. Right. So, um, but I've noticed only recently, this is going to sound so like self-centered, like, bro, relax, you're only 29. <laughs> I know what I'm about to say is going to sound so... Like, people I'm really like, how sick I am. <laughs> <laughs> it, is, it is actually that. Yeah. I've noticed that I have a bit less like it's a bit like if my kids are like oh dad come come do this i'm like oh, i yeah. just sat down like yeah. and i was like oh my gosh i think you should say that i'm not as bouncy bro mm. like i'm like right, come on, let's go i was like i hate that by myself because i'm only 29 and then i think to myself like randy couture was fighting mma fights when he was 56 or something right <laughs> yeah. like yeah, he was like ufc heavyweight champion like 10 years ago yeah. and he was like in his like late 40s got a year and a half on like uh, over me it's actually exactly a year and a half because um when i was a little kid in primary school i used to be like oh my half birthday is in august the 6th <laughs> like that. So okay. it is actually August. so year and a half older did you have you did you start experiencing that or not really yes and it only gets worse no, <laughs> <laughs> no i have and you know what i tell myself yeah you just have to look after yourself more as you get older isn't you it? do you now, on one questions. hand yes and i definitely need to improve on that i the last couple of years I've, I've yeah so that's what this was about yeah <laughs> i want to eat intervention yeah i want to eat the conversation in <laughs> yeah. but come on in guys <laughs> <laughs> so Kai, I've noticed yeah. the, <laughs> <laughs> the I biryanis are getting too yeah, much i need it to be honest but no um one, yeah, 100%, uh, I'm not doing enough exercise, so on and so forth, so it hasn't impacted me. On the other hand, I, I tell myself, look, I'm in grind mode in like multiple ways. We're trying to build businesses and we've got two kids on home barrack, right? There's no way you come out, you, you finish your day. <laughs> you come out of this. You come out of this, yeah, like, in one piece. <laughs> yeah, in one piece. <laughs> But it's true. You're not crawling out of the office. If you, bro, if you get to like, if it's like 10 p.m. and you're feeling, oh, you know what, I, I could go for a run. Like, bro, your sign's not right. You've got two kids, like, you've, you're even not involved enough in like your kids' lives or like you haven't grinded enough today in other areas, right? Yeah. So I feel like. Grind to that. Yeah. 10x. <laughs> yeah. So on, what I think to myself is look, these few years is how it's going to be, all right? Yeah. After, when they're older, inshallah, you can start to like. Because I see, again, as you said, that guy who I don't even know, 56 years old, fought some monster. Yeah, right? Randy so, Couture. No, I don't know Randy. Who's the other Randy? Who's the other Randy? Randy Orton. Yeah, I don't know Randy Orton. Yeah, that That's old things. Randy Orton's WWE. Randy Couture's <laughs> MMA. Like, <laughs> one's oh, cage fighting. I was a basketball guy. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Jacob. Um, so, but anyway, I see also these older guys who are like, they're in gym. But again, 40, 50. So, I'm, inshallah, if Allah gives us long life, may Allah give us long life full of good deeds and tawheed. I can see, like, I can have, like, a... A, like a revitalization of oh, like, I'll get around to how they yeah, yeah. Cause I kind of feel like, bro, uh, I, not, not, not to, not to belittle the fact that I should be getting in shape and everything like that now. <clears throat> but I do have this in my head where it's like, you're not going to be like, you are going to get to the end of the day or have periods in the day. Or it's like, bro, I was up early. I've been doing the kids all day. It's like, it's just not going to, you're a kid. You got two kids, bro. There's yeah. No I think there's it. a lot of truth. To and that, like yeah. after a while, inshallah, as I get a bit older, you'll get more personal time back and, and work yourself. So I kind of, I, I tell myself that, yeah, what you're saying is correct, but it's a temporary time period in life. And I've just got to grind for it. It might even just be from like when your kids are zero to five, because which is kind of how long you want a time box that grind yeah. time in anyway, because yeah. after five, you kind of like, the kids are going to be doing things that. Going it. Like, no, no, I was going to say like they're going to be more active, and you're going to be doing more things with them. True. Because at this point, they're just in the house. They go to the park, but you know they're going to get. It's going to get to a point where like I want to go on like runs with my kids. Yeah. Not necessarily runs, but whatever it is, hikes or whatever. Uh, you know, I, 
<laughs> you know hiking guy? I was thinking like maybe I'd be like <laughs> I walk around a mall, chill in the jacuzzi. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, actually, but having said that, I really seriously get serious now, Kyle. I really want to um, learn how to swim, and I have even obviously got access to the community pool and stuff. Um, I'm Gosh, like, I teach you how to swim. Do you know what I was going to say? Yeah. Bro, I, <laughs> Bring in the pool. Yeah. <laughs> no, I was going to say, um, I can get Fawaz to teach you how to swim. Yeah. You can teach me as well. Could, but yeah. he's a great swimmer. You're a great swimmer. He takes one arm, I take the other one. Yeah, because bro, I, 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 I think it's a complete, complete... Um, embarrassment. No, embarrassment. <laughs> it's not but, embarrassing. No, no, but, but, but it's a complete non-negotiable. You cannot be a grown man and not know how to swim. It's too much of an important life skill. And I've gone too long. Uh, do you know what I used to give myself the excuse of? Because obviously growing up, I, so we did try. I never like went to um, swimming as a kid. Um, <laughs> you're so ready to try that. So, but in school, we went for swimming lessons. Yeah. In school, I never got, learned how to swim, even in the swimming lessons. Like the whole of year five, you go every week to the That's weird. Why didn't they teach you? It's a long time. You go every week, you're right. Yeah, but I guess I was like scared. I think it was from fear. Aspect. Like they can only teach so much, but if you're not willing to like yeah. lift your legs. <laughs> <laughs> you're like clinging to the change yeah. room, isn't it? Why is the kid not learning? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, but, but for us, always taught me when he came like last time, but now he lives here. Uh, yeah. I really, really need to be, and so then, sorry, and then what happened is, as I got older, I went through a chubby phase, and I was like, oh, when I lose weight, I'll start to swim, because I'm embarrassed, like, um, for, like, for, to be, like, topless or whatever, mm. and, and, and I also told myself that about jujitsu because I was like, but, like, 10 years ago, when I, started jiu-jitsu, I was like a chubby kid, teenager, right. I was like, oh, I'll wait till I lose weight, but now, look, <laughs> your boy looks good no, Jake, I don't. but I, I'm, I, I but I'm now I'm no I'm no longer afraid of that insecurity I'm just too old to care yeah. do you know what I mean and also um now I swim with like a t- um a like a you know like a rash guard what do they call it in 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 the fight game we call it a rash guard <laughs> but uh you know like those like um breathable um uh like swimming it's shirt. like a t- like a swimming t-shirt like a swimming t-shirt yeah, yeah because obviously older yeah. so I don't have to care about, but yeah. I could, it doesn't matter about anybody anyway. Bro, you know what? I have you, no excuse basically, yeah. but, and I need to learn, so. You should definitely take advantage of us, like being yeah. here, because yeah. like, it will, it will take you like three sessions, like. Nah, but I, 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 I'm, I'm, I, I'm scared of a lot of things, and one of them is war. Yeah, but bro, you said, you were saying to me, I think last time your, was your father-in-law, and he was helping you to swim as well? That, yeah, so last, I don't know, <laughs> at some point, like my father-in-law was here, Fawaz was here, and yeah. stuff like that. And um, so must they taught then, me, though. and I, I managed to swim from one end to the other end of the pool um, uh, horizontally. So you know okay. the short yeah, side. Yeah. yeah, that's good. Yeah, it was it was progress. But I need to in order to keep good at swimming, I need to swim like way regularly. more often. Yeah, regularly. Yeah. Yeah. This concept. Well, some people say way more often. Some people say regularly. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's fair. Fair enough. That's but fine. yeah, also yes, I would love it if you could teach me how to swim. Yes. Yeah. Um, um, yeah. If you want to do it, let's 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 try and pencil it in. Do you but have a pool in your community? Yeah, you can come to my one if you want. I've never seen it. Yeah, it's like, actually, yeah, I've got, yeah. Where is he? It's, um, so you know where you turn into my house? Yeah. And, we've, and there's like a little park. park. Yeah, so in other, so that's like our little cluster. Yeah. But in other clusters, instead of a park, they've got a pool house. And you're allowed to go to other clusters? Yeah, pools? yeah, yeah. Okay. It's just like a short walk. And other clusters allowed to go to your park? They are. If wow. I let him in. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. you got to speak to Big yeah. K. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You're around these parts. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but yeah, that's fine. We can, uh, we can do it my one here, wherever. Yeah, let's figure that out. Um, but for sure, like from a laziness perspective, I've got one walking distance and Fawaz can take me because he lives here. Like, yeah. uh, we could do it here. Well, you, so. I, I definitely say just take advantage of Fawaz doing it, but I'm happy to do it as well. I wonder what time they close. I think it's like 10 p.m. as well during the evening. Yeah, I think I was the same, even 9 or 10, which is a bit, uh, which is a bit early for my liking. I want to go for a midnight dip, maybe. Midnight yours is over No, no, I wish it was. Oh. It's not. It's like 10 p.m. I think it's 9, 10 p.m. Yeah, you have to go at those times anyway because you don't want to be in there when there's free mixing or anything, right? Yeah, so you if, you go early, times. if you go early, it's usually pretty good. Like I used, I used to get up at like 8 a.m., 8.30 and go. And, was, I, and a lot of the time I have it all to myself, which is very nice. Yeah, I'm going to I'm gonna try. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to make a plan. Yeah. I'm, I'm motivated actually because it, it, it's also from the aspect of... I, I actually think it's an act of worship for me to learn <coughs> to swim because... Um, it's, it's Rujulia. It's about being a man. And like, how can a man, a grown man, bro? Like, bro, something happens to the kids, but you got to jump in the pool. I can't, I, I have to like, yeah. get my missus to jump in the pool. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, yeah. it's that bad, bro. Like, so it's like, I, I, it can't be possible mm. as, a, as a going on 30 year old man that I can't swim. Yeah, this is, yeah, <laughs> this is, 
this, co- this, co- <laughs> <laughs> this yeah. concept of um Rosalia. Yeah, and 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 I'll tell you where I, I'm gonna say cowardice, not even calling you a coward, but whenever I come across something where I'm feeling a bit of fear, yeah. 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 <laughs> no, I'll tell you what. So recently I developed a small phobia. Of, escala- of escalators. Really? Yeah. On the what a loser. Yeah. <laughs> no, <joking. laughs> Idiot. How embarrassing is that? They're 47% never going to fail. <laughs> <laughs> Be a man. <laughs> yeah. Now what happened is... An escalator you, or elevator? Escalator. Even worse. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so what happened is, right, and I think I think this is everybody, but maybe just me, every now and again, every couple of years or so, I'll get an irrational fear of something. Like, yeah, of course. Or, or I'll start, it will start to emerge, let's say. Okay. Right? My tactic at that point is not let it set in. And so I... I look for excuse to go on the escalator, right? That's what I did, alhamdulillah. So, oh, that's good. You just yeah. face it head yeah. on. Yeah, because if you leave it, bro, let's say, for example, because there, there was something that happened that like made that like triggered it. It wasn't a big deal, but I just like triggered it. And from then I was like, oh, maybe I shouldn't go on it. It's like, no, no, no. I, at that point there, you've got to like, make sure at that that instant you've got to go on it. Mm. If you delay it the next day or next day, or oh, I'll do it next week, it grows and grows and grows. It is a real established phobia. So the quicker you attack this whole swing thing, the better it will be. The more I know you've left it years already, but <laughs> the fear the fear can get worse because at the moment yeah. you can get in the pool. But, yeah. Or bro, there's there's some people who like they won't even want to see the pool. Yeah, people. no, no, yeah. It's you know it's more so like the I feel it, it's a, it's not even fear of water, it's fear of drowning. That's obviously yeah. I mean, yeah. I mean, my fear is not of the escalator; it's falling off and dying. Right. Yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> it's falling to my death. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's having a gruesome horrible death. You're right, actually. Yeah. 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 Uh, no, yeah, and um, yeah. So my point being like. For, for, or firstly do it quickly but also be consistent so what I do when I have these situations is that I'll, I'll go on it like quickly but then I'll, I'll keep doing it until it's gone so it's like I'll go on es- I'll bring the ball today I'll make sure I'll go on like two escalators if I see them and then like um, I'll try and do it again the next day or within, within a week how are you doing with that now? I am not it's gone okay. within a couple of days it can go because okay. I don't let it set in so you get ir- you said you get irrational fears every few years I'd say yeah, something like what, that. What are you willing to be vulnerable and tell me another irrational fear? Yeah, yeah I can. The f- uh, <laughs> what's that noise? When I first got to Dubai, I was developing one about uh, driving on motorways. Oh really? Yeah, I, mean, I think kind, kind of understandable. It's quite so scary. It's like an eight <coughs> lane. You go from in the UK having a three lane motorway to well, an eight lane. Well, it was motorway. developing in the UK, right? So I. I, dr- I um, dropped... But don't you have a family member who actually has a fear? Yeah. Okay, yeah. yeah, yeah, he does. So, and it's creeping into me. So I was going on like, you know the, the drive to Stansted Airport? Yeah. I was dropping my father off and like on that journey, um, what is it, A40, M40, something like that, some sort of... One, one yeah, of the A40 becomes the M40. Oh, okay. Wow, didn't know that. Um, so anyway, I think that's the road. On that road, <clears throat> I started to develop it. <clears throat> and so I was thinking, I was like, wow, I'm moving to Dubai in a couple of months. This is not the kind of fear I want to be doing because yeah. I've seen the roads. I haven't driven on them, but I've seen like, you know, it's going to get more motorway So um, what I didn't do, what I should have done, because I was so busy, I didn't really have the time. What I said to myself is I should drive back to Stanton and back again by myself before I go to Dubai just to like get over that. But I didn't really have the time. Those last two months when I was leaving, just had a baby. I didn't have time. So I took, I had to sort of do it here. Um, there was no way, there's no two ways about it. As you know, you can't be here and not drive. So we rented a car, Nissan Kicks. Nice. And um, yeah, just started driving. It was, the first journey was difficult. But again, next day I made sure I was in a car three or four times. I tried that road, tried this road, alhamdulillah. Now I actually enjoy Alhamdulillah, Berak, mashallah, driving mm-hmm. here. That's actually a really surprising story because you <coughs> you are the one who sat with me when I first started driving here in Dubai and you would help me and I was panicking. You were like, it's fine, let's go to this lane. Yeah, and sorry to, to, to interrupt. Um, the reason I mentioned cowardice is that when I'm doing that, I tell myself or- You're I, being a coward. I, I, I make dua that Allah protects from cowardice. Because like, cause like this whole That's concept amazing. of, uh, is it Rajula or Rajula? Uh, I think it's Rujulia, uh, but um, there's different renditions of it because the root word is Rajul, right? Yeah. Like man, so there's different renditions. So this causes a manliness of being a man. It's like, bro, how are you scared of an escalator? And I, make, and then I, I yeah, I, I tell myself, don't be a coward. I make the other people from cowardice and I go on an escalator. It's really interesting you say that actually because <coughs> I, yeah. Yeah, because I am a coward. No, it's really just here because one of the du'as that's helped me the most in my life, bro. And I, for years, I don't think I've ever missed a day not saying this du'a. Like, it's just like, as in... (laughs) And it's the du'a against cowardice. And bro, this du'a is fascinating, bro, because it it encapsulates a lot of things that 
I would be fearful of. So it's like, Allahumma uh, inni al hazan. So against uh, sadness and depression and grief, uh, against um, uh, against like um, I think it's against like debt, debt. Being, overpowered by being overpowered by men, and uh, coward being coward. And it's all encapsulated in one dua. And I, all of those things, <clears throat> like, I don't want to be um, ever in a situation where, obviously, I don't want to be depressed. Uh, I don't want to f- be financially in a, in a really uh, difficult situation. I don't want to feel like somebody's got something over me where um, I'm, like, stuck because, like, someone is, yeah, like, controlling me and stuff like that. Yeah. So I enjoy my freedom. Um, and then, uh, yeah, I don't want to be a coward. So that dua... It really helped me. I think it, it was, it was life changing for me because yeah. it kind of gave me confidence. And 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 alhamdulillah, I think it's even helped. Of course, um, uh, may Allah accept that dua. I mean, yeah, I think it's really powerful dua. But there are so many powerful dua's, but yeah. it's like we don't know. Sometimes I read a dua like that. When you read it in like the, the the hadith that it comes through, it's just like subhanallah. Like how <clears throat> obviously you know revelation. The what the the list of what we just said of like um, was it. Um, uh, depression and anxiety, uh, debt. debt, overpower many cowardice. For some reason, I, I don't know why. Obviously, I, I've got no clue. But they just they, they those five things just go so well together. It's yeah, like, yeah, yeah. I don't know what it is. Allah is best, of, of course. Yeah. But it's like subhanallah. Like it just when you read it, it's like wow. I don't know what it is about those five things that are linked, but they are somehow. And yet, and they're, they're all in this door. Do you understand oh, what I mean? Man, there's something else I speak to my wife about today, and it was from a hadith, and I said, isn't it amazing? And this is from the sunnah. It's like it. It's it like makes it certain that this is like what, how like what we should be doing, and it's so frustrating that I can't remember it now, and it was like uh, oh, that's annoying, but it was one of those practical things that, you know, it's like this just makes sense. Yeah. And but it's hard to explain why it makes sense. It's because you're fit, right? And then it's in the sunnah. You're like, oh, yeah. like he's in the sunnah. Like, yeah. enough said, right? I tell one one thing I wanted to mention. You know, this whole um, uh, Palestine situation is happening right now in the Gaza situation. Um, this trend of like um, Western non-Muslims who like discovered Islam and reading the Quran because through it, through yeah, it because they're, yeah. they're seeing uh, videos of, of, of uh, our brothers and sisters in Palestine like being patient. Uh, even being grateful with their situation. And they're like, how are these people like this? How have they got such strong iman? Or faith? They're saying faith and we know iman. And then like, there's like, I would have ordered my Quran. I'm going to read it. Yeah. And they're reading it on like the, on social media. And they're like, wow, look at this. And, and it's answering so many of the questions that they had that they couldn't find elsewhere. Yeah. And many of them are taking the shahada. Wow. So yeah. Um, uh, yeah there's been some amazing um, stories that have come out about like um, Shaheed's uh, <coughs> passing away. Uh, may Allah grant them Jannah I mean, with like their finger like in a shahada tone or like some someone said like in the rubble we're smelling a scent yeah. like from the martyrs yep. um, uh, like a good scent uh, and other times it's like um, uh, somebody I remember some, I saw a picture of somebody had passed away with the Quran in their hand and these are heartbreaking images and videos um, but it's like I don't want to use any positive word. Yeah, I don't because yeah. it feels weird to say like amazing and incredible thing. But it's like um, when you see that that person has a Quran in their hand, when you see that person's got this shahada finger up. There's just something about it that's like it 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 it, it has to shake your heart and wake you up to have stronger iman because that's 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 oh, you look at that and it has to strengthen your iman in that sense. And you mentioned something a few weeks ago on the <coughs> podcast where you said that it's even like um, a reminder of what life is about. You mentioned that there's even a reminder of death when I mean, you see so much death and stuff. And it's true. It's like, I think in the past few weeks, everybody, if they have an ounce of like heart, has at some point in the past few weeks gone, you know what? What's life really about, man? Yeah. Like, what is life really about? And And it makes you go, I need to fix up. Yeah. That's I a, need to fix up my priorities. I need to fix yeah. up like what I do in my own life. I need to fix up like I need to never not care about when our brothers and sisters are being oppressed. Yeah, yeah. And um, yeah, you. I, I, I'm sure every single person has had a mo- at least, if not still going through it, like at least a moment of self reflection of like, what is life really bad? Am I doing the right thing? Yeah. 
Yeah, um, and it makes when I see those pictures or videos of like someone who, in Charlotte, has died a good death. It makes me obviously we're like our hearts are broken of what's happening, but that particular person I look, they've, they've died with their finger up, or someone saying they're, they're smelling uh, musk coming from their body. For that person, I'm like, I'm so relieved for them and happy for them, and like I'm not worried about them because inshallah they've died a shaheed, right? My you... wife was saying that. Sorry, bro. No, go on. Yeah, but my wife was saying something similar. She was saying that, um, like, it, it, bro, and I'm sure as women, like as a mother, it's different, right? But like, but she can't. Like it breaks her completely yeah. to see the images and videos of children, and she. But she said to me the other day, she was like, "The only thing you can keep telling yourself is, um, they're going to be in Jannah." Yeah. And she said that she said that's so hard for me to comprehend that there's something positive in this because um, she goes, "I'm only human, and my human mind can only." see it from the limited view of a human she's like i can't see that and like try and be happy about it of course no one would be happy about yeah. it but as in but she was like the you do have to keep telling yourself that that child is going to be in jannah yeah. and they're going to be in such a better place 100%. so I, that, I, that sentiment i suppose is 100%. Thing, yeah. and yeah when again like when i see that i feel, I, I my heart is breaking for the parents in that situation yeah. they're still alive and stuff like their family but for that baby specifically obviously you, i don't want to see that baby in yeah in general, i don't, I don't yeah. want that baby to be, have felt anything or like been oppressed anyway but now that it's done and i know at that moment who's in danger me or that baby i'm the one in danger i should be worried about myself now i need to, I need to make sure that i get my man levels up and i get my ibada up that baby is fine now. Uh, yeah and you can help brothers and sisters yeah, yeah that brother is fine now you know, even though it's heartbreaking to see, it's like yeah, and he and lived like such yeah tough yeah. life, yeah. But as of right now, they've made it, and I haven't. I'm still here to being tested, and I need to worry. Yeah, I saw like an AI image of um, an AI image of like children running into like from this dunya, mm. and then it was like into like some like something like some beautiful kind of like um, space like rendition yeah. of like clouds and stuff. It was like yeah, um, good time to end the podcast. One hour eleven. Jazakallah uh, khair guys for listening to this episode of the pod and Jazakallah khair khaya as always for joining me Ayak. and uh, we'll see you on the th I'm, I'm away this week um, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday Monday, Tuesday okay what are you off to? Uh, so on Thursday dad's coming so I've just like taken time off work and stuff so I can like be around and mm -hmm. stuff for him and then I'm just going to go to Saudi for about two days nice. Charles to my sister Inshallah. so I'll be back did I tell you that? Do you know that? Yeah. yeah. Okay, yeah. So um, maybe we can do the next episode of the pod like when I'm back. Um, I imagine yeah. this one will go out on the weekend. I right? guess so, yeah. Let's put this one out on Friday. Because you've got another one, right? That was, yeah, barrel. I'll put one out today. Put this one out on yeah, Friday. And then that gives us like a week to get one out by sure. next weekend at some point. Figure it out. We could do it on Saturday or something. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Thanks, guys. Thanks, Kaya. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Thanks, me. Yeah. Asalaamu Alaikum. Like <laughs>